Let's kick it off with the markets because those key inflation data prints that are going to be out this week are going to give us a little bit more insight maybe onto the Fed's next moves on rates. Bank of America CEO Brian Moynihan urging the Fed to cut rates in September. In an interview over the weekend, he said, quote, it's time for the Fed to take the restrictions off. Joining us now to discuss what's next, we want to bring in Kenny Polkari. He is Case Capital Advisors' managing partner. Kenny, it's great to see you. So let's just first take a step back. Coming off what was last week, a very, very tumultuous week here for the markets. We're setting up for what could be another volatile week here for stocks. What should investors be doing or anticipating here ahead of those key econ prints that we will be getting? Well, a couple of things, right? Good morning. Nice to have you. Nice to be with you. Uh, a couple of things, right? Last week was a very, very volatile week. On Monday, there was a lot of internal damage done to the market. So investors need to understand that it's going to remain volatile. And we're probably going to have to retest those lows over some period between probably now and the end of the, end of the month. Tomorrow's, C, uh, tomorrow's PPI and Wednesday CPI are going to be key factors in inflation. They are supposed to come in a little bit better than the expectation. So that's going to, you know, that's going to help the argument that the Fed needs to start cutting rates. Does the Fed need to start cutting them drastically by a half a basis point or three quarters of a basis point? I don't think so. I think a 25 basis point move uh, is really what the market is expecting. I think that's what a lot of uh, economists are expecting, but I think street analysts are expecting for a bigger move, which I think would be a mistake. So I think investors need to understand the data that's coming. They also need to understand August is kind of a funny month, right? There's a lot of people on vacation, so there's a lot less volumes. And so moves can be exaggerated in either direction based on the data that comes out. So don't put too much uh, uh, thought into it as you just, you have to kind of watch as the market uh, reacts to the data without getting too uh, impatient, right? Patience at this time uh, is very much a virtue. Kenny, do you think there's a chance that we are overpricing the likelihood of a huge market reaction to this data print, given that the market has particularly been concerned about the labor market so far versus the inflation data? And the real question has been about a growth scare, not about an inflationary scare. I think the market is now very sensitive as overreacting to both, you know, to all the economic data that comes out, right? If the CPI number is better than expected, the, I would expect another overreaction demanding that the Fed needs to cut rates. They need to cut it sooner rather than later. They need to make a big, make a bigger cut. I think the Fed is actually doing the right thing, especially after last week's uh, uh, Monday move and the calls for an emergency rate cut meeting. And, oh, my God, the world was coming to an end. In fact, they sat back and they said, slow down. We're watching it. We understand we have it under control. And look, the market kind of uh, rebalanced did not completely, which is why I think they're still concerned. But I think you have to be careful, especially in August, uh, that the market reacts, uh, overreacts either way to the to the uh, to the expectation. Although I do think that there is there is some reality to a, a slowing growth story, not necessarily a crash, but certainly a slowing growth story, and that's okay considering from where we came. Well, so again, Kenny, what do you make of the comments from Bank of America CEO Brian Moynihan really pushing for a September cut? If we don't get a cut in September, there's lots of talk about 50 basis points. But what if we don't even get 25? Would that be a mistake? I, I don't I, I think we are getting a cut in September. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to get 25 basis points. I think actually a 50 basis point would be the mistake. I don't think at this point. Why, Kenny? Uh, as long as long as the data you know, continues to be what it is, and the CPI and PPI continue to be better. I don't see how the Fed cannot cut. They've prepared the markets for a cut. They've been talking about it. They didn't prepare the markets for a July cut, and so we didn't get one. But they are preparing it for a September cut, and I think 25 basis points is right, and I think Moynihan is correct. But, Kenny, why would 50 be wrong? Is it just because that risk that you still see here to the upside for inflation? No, I think 50 would be wrong because 50, in my mind, would suggest that, you know, they're, that the Fed is behind the eight ball and now they're trying to play catch up because they see something more negative on the horizon. So I think 50 basis points just gives the impression that mm, we missed it. We're trying to catch up and that would and that would create some concern. I think if they stick to 25, that's what they've been saying all along. I think that would help the market smooth out. Kenny, I want to shift gears a little bit and talk about the election. Uh, in the notes that you sent over to us, you had a quote saying the Biden-Harris years have been a, quote, disaster for the economy. Talk to me about where you stand in your thinking on which, what, what either candidate's potential in the White House come November could mean for the economic path here moving forward. Well, you know, it's very interesting. You know, we kind of know where Trump stands in terms of the economy and policies that he'd like to implement. 
We still have not heard from the other side. We have not heard from Kamala Harris's uh, campaign on what her policies are. She's out there waving everybody, saying, you know, I'm going to change things and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. But there's no policy. You go to her website, there's no policy. So we still don't know what Kamala Harris and, the, and, and that ticket is really planning in terms of policies. We do have a sense with Trump. We understand where he wants to go. He's been very clear. Uh, we have a history with that. We don't have one with Kamala Harris at all, and she's not really putting one forth, at least not yet. Uh, and that's causing more uncertainty and, uh, and lack of clarity in the markets. At some point, she's going to have to stand up and say, look, this is the policy. This is the platform. Maybe we're going to get it this week at the Democratic National Convention. Maybe. Um, and if we do, then it'll be clearer for investors to kind of assess, OK, here's what he thinks, here's what she thinks. And where and where do where where are we? Right. Where are we in, as investors in terms of where do we think it should go? So, Kenny, what should investors then be doing when they're trying to position their portfolio? There's a slew of uncertainty out there. Should they be making any changes now? And why or why not? So I think as a long term investor, here's what you have to do. You have to at this time, I think if you're going to add more money to your portfolio, you have to add it defensively. So you have to think of kind of big, boring names, consumer staple names. You got to think of utilities, which are the most boring sector in the whole group. But at this time, especially if rates are going to go lower, utilities will benefit. Right. NEE is a great name that's still down 12 percent from when they started uh, raising rates two years ago. So if they start cutting rates, NEE is going to be one of those names that benefits from that. And it already is an anticipation, right? Consumer stables are another kind of boring group, yet they're good dividend payers. And look, there's stuff that we need, Procter & Gamble, uh, Kimberly Clark, Johnson & Johnson. Those are all things, whether we're in a recession or not, that consumers are going to need. So you got to get a little bit more defensive. Now, if we see a big pullback in some significant names, whether they're tech or otherwise, you know, NVIDIA was off 30 percent uh, on by Wednesday night. Now, it rallied a little bit on Thursday and Friday, but it was off 30 percent. That was a screaming buy for me. Whether or not you like tech or not, or you think, you know, you shouldn't be in tech because it's too nervous, it's down 30 percent in NVIDIA when the story hasn't changed was a real opportunity for the long term investor that's looking out 5, 10, 15 years. Right. Um, and so that's how you have to position yourself. But if you're if you're really nervous about what's going to happen over the next uh, two or three months, which is a seasonally weak time of year in the markets anyway, August to October is seasonally weak. The market tends to go lower. Then either you do two things: you 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 get more defensive with with the boring names, consumer stable utilities, or you put your money in treasuries, earning five percent or four and a half percent. That right. is also an investment decision. Right. That's certainly some activity that we are starting to see, Kenny. Thank you so much yeah. for joining us. That was Kenny Polcari, Case Capital Advisors Managing Partner. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.